Several years ago, there was a commercial for Calgon Foam Bath that showed a housewife looking frantic and stressed as the phone rang. The kids cried, the dishes piled up, and the dog barked. The woman stops what she is doing and shouts, Calgon, take me away. And then in the next scene, she is enjoying a Calgon bubble bath without a care in the world. I think all of us, regardless of age, need times in which we wish we could just find a quiet place where we can be alone. The challenges of everyday life can wear us down sometimes, leaving us feeling stressed and perhaps even worse, making us forget about the many blessings in our lives. We were never promised a trouble-free and stress-free life, but we were promised that whatever difficulties we face would not define us or defeat us. Jesus became man in order to show us how to live our lives, and he died so that we would have eternal life. His resurrection is the promise of a new day and new opportunities. We read in chapter 1 of the book of Revelation, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. Perhaps we can ask ourselves, do I really believe in this promise? Does the way I live my life reflect the trust that I have that, I have that Jesus will indeed make all things new? In today's gospel, according to St. Mark, Jesus teaches in the synagogue and comes face to face with a man who is possessed by an unclean spirit. And when I hear the words possession and unclean spirit, my thoughts turn to exorcism and movies like The Exorcist. The unclean spirit Jesus, Jesus expels from the man, however, can be so many other things too. Sins, selfishness, stress, egotism, and many other actions and behaviors that distance us from God and from one another. All of us seek some sort of relief and comfort from those unclean spirits that trouble us sometimes on a daily basis. Our 21st century world is full of guides and gurus who provide valuable advice and life lessons that enable us to view our own lives from a different angle. Recently, for example, I finished reading a book called Bounce Back by John Calipari, the head basketball coach at the University of Kentucky. He writes about how he has bounced back from setbacks in his own life and how anyone who has lost a job, been part of a failed marriage, or faced any number of obstacles that we may encounter in our lives can find redemption and turn a negative experience into a positive one and a life-giving one. The problem with self-help books and things like it, however, is that we can become too dependent on what we hear or see to the point that we become blind to the presence of Jesus in our lives and deaf to his voice. St. Mark in today's gospel writes that Jesus teaches with authority. And a common meaning of authority is power. But the authority of Jesus is also one of understanding, empathy, and love. Jesus is all-powerful but he is also the most pure source of love, mercy, and understanding. He is what we long for in our hearts. Yet, it is very easy to pay more attention to the voices in our world that do not represent true authority. According to Thomas Merton, who was a Trappist monk and a prolific writer, all of us have two identities. One identity is who we are as wrapped up in society, which Merton calls our false identity. This identity follows the gospel of society and its misplaced values. The other identity is wrapped up in God 
and it is our true identity. And we can easily become the victims of a struggle between the two identities, knowing full well that our goal is to be in the world, but not of the world. However, much easier said than done. Jobs, family life, bills, health issues, and a number of other factors can be a cause of stress. And stress is never from God. The identity that sees society as the authority can lead, a, that can lead us to believe that we know more than Jesus, forgetting that Jesus had to fall so that we can rise. Redemption and hope, real hope, are only possible through the authority of Jesus. Now, perhaps you might be asking, but how can this be? These same words came out of the mouth of the Virgin Mary when the angel Gabriel informed her that she would conceive a child who would be the savior of the world. As human beings, we have doubts and questions, but Jesus has proven that as the one who has authority from the Father, he has all the answers. What unclean spirits do you need to expel from your life? Take time this week to answer that question and look hard at yourself, as difficult as it may be. None of us wants to reveal or acknowledge our weaknesses and, in, and imperfections, yet we all have them. Acknowledgement of our weaknesses makes us human, and it is in our humanity that we are able to love. In this gospel, according to St. Mark, though, we should not focus on the unclean spirit but rather we should focus on the healer, Jesus. There are a number of examples of people whose lives recovered from devastating events because of their faith in Jesus and his authority. In addition to the word authority, two other words that stand out in today's gospel are astonished and amazed, both of which describe the reaction of Jesus' disciples as he taught and expelled the unclean spirit from the man. And one of the main themes of St. Mark's gospel is trust. He presents a very human Jesus and wants the readers to trust the risen Lord as the Savior. Jesus' own disciples, however, who accompanied him for three years during his entire ministry, were blind to that trust. Instead, they were more impressed with the miracles and other feats never before seen. St. Mark hopes that we and all who read his gospel will see better than the own disciples of Jesus. Jesus was able to give sight to the blind, but he was not able to give insight and understanding to those who lived with him. We have the benefit of 2,000 years of hindsight, and St. Mark hopes that we will see Jesus for who he really is, the one whose death and resurrection give true meaning to the life we lead. St. Paul in today's second reading tells us why it's so important to listen and to obey to the voice of Jesus. He writes, brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. When we are free from anxieties and sadness, we are able to serve God the way he intended us to do so. St. Paul addresses marriages as a reminder that our family lives, our professions, our friendships, our concerns about money or health can distract us from serving God if we do not incorporate them into our faith life. Paul reminds us, St. Paul reminds us that we are more aware of what we need to do to keep our focus on God. And as we sang in the responsorial psalm, if today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts, Jesus wants us to be free of unclean spirits so that we can do what we were created to do, to love one another and lift each other up and serve as a bridge to heaven for a spouse, a child, a friend, and anyone else who needs us to love them into wholeness.
Together we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God.